Let's take a look at an empirical example of exploratory factor analysis. To do that we need some data and our data comes from a research paper by Mesquita and Lazzarini from 2008. This is an interesting paper because the authors present a full correlation matrix of all the indicators in the paper. That means that we can replicate everything that the authors do using the correlation matrix and we also get the same result for all the analysis. So this is completely transparent paper that we can replicate ourselves. This article uses converter factor analysis and structural regression models but we can equally well do an exploratory factor analysis to see if we get the same result as the authors did. So this is the, the data set that we have and it's, it's the table one descriptive statistical correlations except instead of on a scale level it is on the indicator level. We will be using all questions that are measured on the 1 to 7 scale to eliminate any scaling issues from the data. So we'll have our five scales, these five here, and the indicators are three indicators for horizontal governance, three indicators for vertical governance, three indicators for collective sourcing, two indicators for export orientation, and three indicators for investment. Whether these indicators measure what the authors claim they do measure is a question that we will not answer, ad address in this video. We'll just take a look at whether, uh, for example, these export orientation indicators can be argued to measure something together that is distinct from the other indicators. So we have 14, vari 14 variables and we want to assess whether they measure five distinct things. In an exploratory factor analysis, when we we start the analysis we have to define how many factors we extract. So uh, one way to do uh, that decision is to use a, a tool called scree plot. So the idea of a scree plot is that um, we extract components from the data and um, then we have a variable here that quantifies how many variables worth of variance each component explains. Uh, some rules of thumb on how to choose the com number of factors is that we uh, can either choose uh, five factors based on, on a pivot point. So a clear pivot point when the curve starts to go flat means that that's the number of factors that we should extract. Another rule of thumb is that we uh, go as long as we get these uh, eigenvalues more than one which would be uh, four factors. But here we know that this set of indicators is supposed to measure five distinct things so we can use the best rule of thumb which is our theory and the theory states that we take five factors because that's why we have five different things that we want to measure. So we apply factor analysis, we uh, request five factors using these 14 indicators, we get the result printout from R. So what does the printout tell us? There are different sections, there are four, three different sections. The first section is the factor loadings, so these statistics are tell how strongly the indicators are related to each factor and how much uniqueness there is in the indicators that the factors don't explain. The second section is the variance explained how much each, each, uh, each factor explains the variation and then finally in the table uh, in the bottom section we have different model quality indices. I don't typically uh, myself interpret these model quality indices because if I want want to really know if the model fits the data well or not, I will do it with a confronter factor analysis based techniques which are, have a lot more diagnostics options available. So in practice we interpret the factor loading pattern, how strong the individual loadings are and how much variation the factors explain. If you want to uh, do more diagnostics then it's better to move into the confronter factor analysis family of techniques. So the factor loadings here provide us some information. They provide us information about how strongly each indicator is related to each factor. The factor loadings are uh, regressions of items on factors. So it's, it's a regression path, it's a directional path because this is a standardized factor analysis solution and the factors are uncorrelated in this factor solution which they are by default. Then uh, the loadings also equal correlations. So uh, this uh, last item correlates to 0.75 with the second factor. Then we have also the uniqueness here with the communality, the h square, which tells uh, how much 
of the variation of the indicator, all the factors explained together and uniqueness how much of the uh, variance of the indicator remains unexplained. Sometimes the uniqueness is uh, interpreted as uh, evidence or, or measure of unreliability. So if uniqueness is 30 percent, we say that the indicator's error variance is 30 percent, 70 percent is the reliable variance. The problem with that approach is that the uniqueness also captures uh, other sources of unique variation that is not random noise. So for example, there is probably some something unique in, in total quality management item that is not related to other investment items that would be, rele would be reliable if we ever to ask the same question again. So uh, factor analysis uh, uh, puts uh, the, the unreliability uh, variance, the random error and the unique variance into, into one same number and there is really no, no way of taking them apart. So that's one weakness of a factor analysis. They are, the variance explained here shows that the first factor explains uh, most of the variation, but this is an unrotated solution, so we don't really pay much attention to this uh, except for one thing. So uh, we can do a Harman single factor test, which you sometimes see in uh, reporting in papers. And uh, the Harman's test involves uh, checking whether uh, the first factor explains uh, a ma majority of the data, of the variance in the data and whether it dominates over the other factors. So we can see here the first factor is 25 percent, the second factor is 16 percent. We can't say that the first factor would explain most of the data. We can't say that it would dominate over the other factors because 25 and 16 percent are still in the same ballpark. Uh, the Harman single factor test is a bit misleadingly named because it's not really a statistical test. And it's not even a very good diagnostic because um, it will probably detect only very uh, severe method variance problems. Nevertheless, it's something that you can easily check from the, the results of exploratory factor analysis. If you want to do more rigorous tests of method variance, then you can apply confrontatory factor analysis based techniques that allow you much more decrease of freedom on, on what you can do. Let's take a look at the factor loadings. The idea of factor loadings is that they should uh, show a pattern. So we should see that uh, the indicators that are supposed to measure the first three, uh, the first three indicators that are supposed to measure one thing should load on one factor and one factor only. And then the measures of the other construct should not load on that factor. So it's not the case here. And the reason why it's not the case is that this is an unrotated factor solution. So typically in a factor analysis, when we extract the factors, we take the first factor that explains the majority of the data. And if the, uh, the constructs that cause the data are correlated, then the first factor contains a little bit of every, every construct. So it's uh, all indicators load on it highly and we can't really uh, interpret it. So we do a factor rotation and uh, factor rotation simplifies the factor analysis result. It also makes uh, another uh, nice, uh, has an, uh, another nice feature. Factor rotation can relax the constraint that all the factors are uncorrelated when we do the factor analysis. They are uncor the, the zero correlation constraint is something, it's a technical reason why we have it and it doesn't make any theoretical sense if we are studying constructs that we think are related. So if we think that two constructs are related causally or otherwise, we cannot assume that the constructs are uncorrelated. Therefore, imposing a, a constraint that two factors that are supposed to represent those constructs are uncorrelated doesn't make any sense. That's another reason why we uh, rotate the factors which uh, relaxes that constraint. The factor rotation uh, simplifies the result and after rotation we can see that the first three indicators go to one factor, the second three to another factor. So we have a nice pattern that each indicator, lo each group of indicators loads on one factor only and there are no cross loading. So this would be evidence uh, that these indicators, for example, these three indicators measure uh, the same thing together and it is distinct from what these other indicators may measure. So you want to have this kind of pattern and it is indication of validity. Of course it doesn't guarantee validity because it doesn't tell us 
what these indicators have in common, but it's some kind of indirect evidence that there could be one construct underlying driving the correlations between these indicators. Another thing that we look at from these factor loadings is their magnitude. So that's uh, what, what we do when we assess the results. And this is an example from Ulleringer's article. They have a, a, a table of factor loadings. They have the measurement items. They have labeled the factors. So usually you label the factors with the constructs names or and uh, then, then you look at the loadings. So the factor loadings here are inter, uh, interpreted as evidence of reliability. So the square of factor loading is an estimate of the reliability of the indicator. And then we also have these uh, statistics, Z statistic that is used for testing the significance, whether the loading is zero or not. I don't think uh, the, 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 high, the null hypothesis that loading is zero is very relevant. So you want to really know whether the, uh, the indicators are reliable enough, not whether the reliability differs on zero. So uh, this is not a very useful uh, test, but people still re sometimes present it. The first indicator here is not tested. Uh, the reason for this is that this is from a converter factor analysis and there's a technical reason why the first indicator is not, not tested here. That will exp explain that in another video. Then, uh, the authors say that the standardized loadings are all about 0 0.57 and they are, the cutoff is 0 0.4. The, the commonly used cutoff is 0 0.7, but you can probably find somebody who has presented a lower cutoff if you do that kind of cherry picking. But uh, really, uh, normally we want to have the loadings to have 0 0.7, but reliability again is a matter of, of decree. It's not a matter of yes or no, and you have to then assess what the unreliability means for your study results.